Hello, and welcome to Skyrim Requiem. This is the complete armor collection, and I'm finishing up the Thieves Guild questline. After the last mission, came back, had some conversations, and uh, was made the, the Guildmaster. This is a spoiler alert that you're about to see the Guildmaster armor, and some of you might not want to see it. So um, those of you who don't, uh, you're running out of time to hit the stop button because I'm about to show it to you. And here it is, the Guildmaster armor. Look at the numbers on that. I could not believe when I saw these numbers. That is just absolutely unbelievable. And you end up with a total of 30% magic resistance. And combined with the 30% I have in alteration, that's just amazing. Um, the, these numbers just blew me away completely. And you start with an armor rating of 213, but of course I'm going to upgrade these. Those numbers are just unbelievable. I'm looking at those and I just can't believe them. But that's Requiem. Requiem makes things harder, but the rewards are much, much better. Just, just great. And, and the armor looks good too. So I'm going to take you through all of the armor that you receive in the course of doing the Thieves' Guild. And this is the Thieves' Guild armor that you get like right coming in the door. And uh, 233 armor. Actually, it's a little higher than that because the hood can be upgraded, so close probably to 250 or 240 or something. And, and it's pretty good. I mean, it, it's good to get started with uh, pickpocket and lockpicking and get a little bonus to haggle, uh, get a little additional carry weight. It's not bad. So, and it has pretty good defense for light armor, for what it is. You really don't need anything beyond that for running around in the towns. So this is the shrouded armor, uh, which you get by just joining the Dark Brotherhood. This, I use this for fighting. Uh, pretty good, really good armor, actually. 300 is great. Uh, now, all this has been upgraded with smithing, of course. And uh, really good for fighting. Uh, nice buffs for fighting and for backstabbing. I was very happy with, with that. Not bad enchants and not bad armor. And that's without a shield. Shield is about another 100 points. And alteration, you know, 250 or 300 more. This is the Nightingale armor. I already did a kind of a walkthrough on the Nightingale armor. Not only does it look terrific, but you're completely quiet, really. Um, terrific numbers uh, all the way around. Terrific buffs to fighting, archery, uh, one-handed absolutely terrific armor really really like it and very nice armor rating too as you can see this is Lenway's armor now Lenway's armor is actually very good in the early game and uh, the individual components can be used in different quests uh, you know where they're more useful I think um, yeah, th th these are great numbers. If you're a one-handed character, good. Ranged weapon, 15%. Those are really good numbers for the early game. So um, as an early quest, that's not bad and very good armor rating as well. This is the Guildmaster armor. Again, unbelievable numbers. Now this is my glass armor uh, up top so you can compare it. This has a very, very high 
defense, but my argument would be that you really don't need it. You don't really need these numbers. And the enchants that I'm able to put on, you can see how bad they are. The, the enchants are nothing. I mean, they're so bad compared to the enchants that you get on the Guildmaster, Nightingale, or even the, you know, lesser armor. So yeah, you get a higher armor rating, but is it really worth the additional points? I think not. I, I don't think it's worth the additional points. Well, I know it's not worth the additional points. So do you even need to make the glass armor at all? A after having done this? No, I don't think so. You just need to get smithing up so that you can improve the leather and be done with it. Now here are some of the weapons. Now I don't have any perks in in uh, sword. So these numbers are lower than what you're going to have. The Nightingale bow has exactly the same uh, uh, damage rating as the Ebony bow. But I, I think you need to still make an Ebony bow because um, you really do need something enchanted with fire. Fire is such a powerful enchant and the Nightingale bow does great damage and it would be perfect against bandits but if you're gonna fight undead and vampires I don't think those are the enchants that you want to have. Those are definitely not good enchants for fighting most of the really mid-level enemies. So I'm showing you right now what the different armor, the effect of the different armor on the different weapons. And this is something you have to decide for yourself. Uh, what weapon goes best with what armor set? This is the complete collection of everything you can have in the Thieves Guild quest line. And, you know, everything on the trophy case. And for completing all 125 side quests, you get the safe. And what's in the safe, you ask? Uh, this is what you get. It's, boy, that's great. Yeah, that was worth 125 side quests. Anyway, trophy case, look how great that is. That's, that's great. Uh, I recommend you don't do the 125 side quests. You don't get anything for it. That was a, you know, it's kind of a completionist run, so I wanted to know what was in the safe. So now I know and now you know. We do get the Shrine of Nocturnal. That gives us an additional 10 points or 10% to sneaking. So that's, that's really good. And it lasts a very long time. You also might want to notice how much gold I have. At the end of the Thieves Guild, I've made almost a million septums. Um, I always make the three soups, which are a big deal, and take those before every mission. Every time I leave, take those. So yeah, d doing the uh, Thieves Guild quest line I had the character really throw herself into being a thief, and every seven days the merchants replenish and she would go out and steal. And she would steal for a couple days, so more than 50% of the time she was stealing. The, the quests actually didn't take that long. What really took a lot of hours was uh, stealing. That's where she spent, I spent a lot of time stealing. She got a bag of holding. That was important, that increased carry weight. And now with the Guildmaster armor, she gets an additional 75 carry. So that takes her up to very high carry capacity. And I, I wanna stay around 200 because the more you carry, the, the more noise you make and so on, and the slower you move. So um, it's nice to have. Two of the most important things you can have are the blacksmithing potion. Good is the highest level. You get 5%. 
and the other thing is the enchanting, and that's also 5% is the best. Um, you only get a couple of enchanting potions during the entire course of the game, so they're very valuable. But if I was going to, you know, if I would give a recommendation, only use the enchanting on weapons for armor, well, you have lots of armor to pick from in the game that's better than anything you can make. And she looks absolutely terrific. Yep, turn the lights on. Actually, what I did was I waited till daytime. This ends the Thieves Guild quest line. Uh, she's completed everything. And the only thing I would tell you is I have done the Thieves Guild quest line very few times. My last Requiem character didn't even touch the Thieves Guild, didn't because hated thieves, didn't steal anything. This playthrough, this character was a thief. And although I've played a lot of Requiem, I've never had any affection for the Thieves' Guild until now. This has been a great experience. I loved being in the Thieves' Guild. I love the characters. I got to know everybody in the quest line, and it was a great, great deal of fun. I highly recommend it, and I'll see you next time.